Before we get into the debate about whether or not beans belong in Chile, hear me out. So today we're going to be making an inside out chili dog. What that means for us is we're going to be taking all the ingredients that we love putting on a freshly grilled hot dog and we're going to be putting them inside the casing with the sausage. We're going to be using some kidney beans. I'm going to finely dice some red onion. And on top of all that, we're going to be using some Fritos and we're going to grind those up in just a minute here and we're going to be using that as our binder flour. A binder flour is going to help hold our protein and our fat together so we have a really good texture and moisture content for our final sausage. And of course we're going to be using our 158 chili dog seasoning. This is going to have all those seasonings and spices that is going to give us that classic chili flavor inside our hot dog. Speed Cure is going to give us a little extra saltiness, it's going to give us that classic pinkish red color in our sausage, it's also going to help us avoid any food safety issues. And then lastly, what you don't see here is our high temp cheddar. Cheddar is obviously a big part of a chili dog, but we're keeping that in the freezer until we're ready to mix it into our meat block. Binders are meant to hold fat and protein together inside the sausage. That way we don't lose any fat when we're cooking and it doesn't bleed out so that we get a really consistent texture and flavor. Now I'm gonna grind up more than we need because I'm going to measure it out after the fact because it has to be a certain percentage when it goes into our meat block. So when I dice this onion, I'm going to get a really small dice here because I don't want big hunks of onion inside the sausage. It's more of a little bit of color that we're looking to add to the sausage and part of the flavor profile as well. It's going to give a nice little sweetness to it. I have all the grinder parts sitting in the cooler to stay cool so that we avoid any smearing when we get to the grinding. I also have our meat block cut up. So I'm gonna get all this put together and we're gonna do our first grind. For our hot dogs, we're gonna be using about a 60-40 meat ratio with our beef, which we're using chuck roast to pork. I've broken this down and had it nice and cold. And for our first grind, we're gonna be going through a 3 8 inch plate. This is gonna be the first grind, which is gonna be nice and coarse and give us our first breakdown of our meat. After that, we'll switch out the plate to a 3 16 and that'll give us our second grind, which is still gonna be a relatively coarse grind hot dog, but it's gonna be really nice texture for our final product. And I'm gonna grind both the beef and the pork together so that we start that mixing process. We want both meats to be equally dispersed throughout our sausage. <laughs> quick change out of our grinding plate and we'll be ready for our second grind. We've got our grinding plate replaced with a 3 16 so now we're going to go for our second grind. Then we're going to add all of our inclusions including our seasoning for the final mix. Our grind looks really nice, nice and even. The fat is still separated from the protein at this point, which is a good sign. So I'm gonna break down our grinder and then we'll get to mixing. Our meat block weighs out to be about six and a half pounds. So I weighed out our seasoning and our cure to match that batch size. For seasoning, that's gonna be 3.75 ounces. And for a cure, it's gonna be just under seven grams. I'm going to mix our speed cure in with some beef broth so that I can add it to our meat block. Mixing the speed cure into the liquid is just gonna help us with that distribution so it's nice and even. I also have our red onion and about three ounces of Fritos that we ground up to be our binder flour. For binders, you wanna use about two to 3% of the overall meat block weight as your inclusion. So I'm gonna mix all these together with our meat block, mix until we start getting our protein extraction, at which point I'll put in our more delicate inclusions which would be our high temp cheddar cheese and our kidney beans. So in goes the seasoning. And this can get up in the air a little bit, so be careful when you add that. Don't dump too aggressively. Like I said, I'm going to add the speed cure into the liquid here. It's not gonna fully dissolve, but it will help distribute that nice and even throughout our meat. Our red onion. Finally, our Fritos ground up as our binder. And when you're mixing your meat block like this, you're gonna kinda knead it like a dough. 
Just folding it over itself, squeezing it together. Get that seasoning really well distributed throughout, nice and even. And we're also going to start looking for our protein extraction. The protein extraction process is what happens when you mix and those fats and proteins start to link up. And we're looking for that so that they don't separate in the cooking process. Because if they separate in the cooking process, we're going to lose a lot of fat, which will affect our texture and get us to lose a lot of flavor. Before we add our other inclusions, I want to make sure our flavor profile is on point. So I'm going to take a little piece, I'm going to fry it up, and I'm going to taste it before I case it. The sample I made tasted great. Our salt levels are on par. Our protein extraction is almost exactly where we want it, so we're ready to add in our high temp cheddar and our beans. For our batch, I'm going with about 12 ounces of high temp cheddar, and I have one can of kidney beans that I've rinsed really well in cold water and then drained. So when I'm mixing this in, I'm gonna be a little more gentle because I wanna try and keep those beans intact as best I can. But I do want them well distributed. Nice and tacky, which means our protein extraction has taken hold. So we're ready to go to the stuffer. I've got our sausage stuffer set up with a half inch horn and now I'm gonna load the meat block into the stuffer. I'm gonna add the meat block a little bit at a time, starting in the center and pushing down. This will move the meat towards the edges of the stuffer and help us avoid any air pockets. We're gonna crank down until the meat starts coming out of the horn here. We're gonna take it down about 75% of the way before we pull back on the pressure and start loading our casings. Today we're using a 32 to 35 millimeter size casing and I rinsed and soaked these about an hour and a half ago and they've just been sitting in some room temperature water since then. This will help soften them up, make them a little more pliable and easy to use when we're loading and stuffing our sausages. Pulling that water into the casing is going to give it one final rinse. It's also going to help lubricate it for when we're loading our horn. Now 3235 is larger than a standard hot dog that you might make, but we've got a lot of inclusions in this one, so we wanted to use a slightly bigger size casing. I'm gonna put some water down on the table here too so that our sausages don't clump up too much. As always, the key to stuffing sausage is even pressure on two ends. We're gonna try and keep the crank as smooth and as even as possible. Same with our left hand, that's gonna be guiding the sausage off of the horn and into the casing. All right, so we're gonna link these up. We're gonna go about five or six inches, pinch, another five or six, pinch, and then we're gonna twist. And you're gonna keep that pattern, skipping one, and twisting until you've got them all linked. Now that they're all linked up, I'm gonna take our sausage pricker and I'm gonna go through and try and eliminate as many of these air pockets as possible. We wanna do that because if we let those go into the smoker or even onto the grill, we could potentially have some bursting and some breaking, which is gonna lose us a lot of fat and a lot of flavor. And now we're done for the day. We've ground our meat, seasoned it, and mixed in our inclusions. We stuffed it into our casings, and now it's gonna go into the fridge overnight. Letting our sausage sit in the fridge overnight is gonna help develop those flavors and set the cure. It's also gonna dry out our casings a little bit, and that's gonna form a pellicle on our sausage, which is gonna help absorb smoke when we go into the smokehouse tomorrow. Our sausages have been in the cooler for about 16 to 18 hours at this point, and they look great. They're a bit tacky, which is a good sign, and that means our pellicle has formed. The pellicle is a thin layer of proteins that'll form on the outside of meat or sausage that really helps with smoke absorption. If there's any moisture left on the outside of the sausage, that can hinder the smoke absorption process, and we'd lose a lot of flavor. I have our PK100 preheated to about 100 degrees outside and we're going to throw our sausage in there on some smoke sticks for one last drying process before we crank up the heat and start our smoking. I'm going to loop the sausages on the smoke sticks just like this. I'm going to space them out so that we get good airflow so that all the sausages cook really evenly. I hung the sausages in the smokehouse at 100 degrees and let them dry in there for about an hour. After which, I increased the smokehouse temperature to 135 and I added our sawdust. I let that smoke for about an hour 
and then I increased the temperature again to 155. After another hour, I removed the smoke and then turned the smokehouse up to 180 degrees, at which point I let the sausages cook until they reached an internal temperature of 155 degrees. I took the sausages out of the smokehouse and immediately put them in a cold ice bath. I left them there for about half an hour before taking them out, setting them in the fridge overnight to dry out the casings and to cool completely. And today, here we are. I set these beautiful sausages on our art flame and I am ready to try them. They seared up really nice, they have beautiful color, and they smell amazing. So I'm gonna get right to it and give them a taste. Look at that, you can see the beans stayed and the cheese. Looks like we got a really nice coloration too. So the cure is nice and even. I'm really happy with the way this looks. Nice and firm, evenly stuffed. So let's give it a taste. The chili dog seasoning is right on point with a little bit of heat. The cheese makes it nice and creamy and smooth. The grind of the meat is really perfect. The texture bites through beautifully, is not dry. The casings have a beautiful snap, and those beans add that little chili factor that is really nice. I'm very happy with the way these turned out. And I've got some buns, I'll throw them on there, maybe a little topping of sour cream to finish them off. I know my coworkers are gonna love these. So for this recipe and more, head to psseasoning.com. If you like this video, please subscribe, and check us out on all other forms of social media as well. Until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.